Topic has always dabbled in Lolita fashion, but their releases through the past have often been too short and a little bit more in the costume territory in terms of quality. I've always seen Hot Topic as a place where you can get accessories and things to add to Lolita fashion, but I've never thought of it as a place to go and recommend to get Lolita fashion. I have been noticing more and more elements of Lolita fashion in Hot Topic dresses, and it's getting to the point where I'm asking myself, can you actually buy Lolita fashion from Hot Topic? This video was not sponsored by Hot Topic. It was sponsored by Rose Forever, but a little bit more on that later. Hot Topic did not ask me to make this. They don't know that I'm making this, but I did receive these pieces through a sponsor program on Instagram. I often get campaigns from Hot Topic and just promote their products on Instagram and they give me a list of things to choose from, but I have been specifically choosing these pieces for a while now so that I can also cover them here. So this is not a paid endorsement, but I did receive the pieces that I'm reviewing for free and for those campaigns. What I wanna do is look at these pieces and sort of think about what things make them Lolita and compare them to other specifically Lolita dresses that I have, find commonalities among them, measure them up to one another, and then I want to analyze whether I think they are Lolita or not. Despite what the Lolita fashion community will have you think, there is no specific way to determine whether something is Lolita fashion or not. It's basically based on a bunch of people and their opinions and whether they agree or not. <laughs> and I really hate the term loliable. Should I get into that now? Should I save that for another video? I feel like it's not, I don't, I feel, I feel like I can explain it briefly. Let's get into it. A quick rant on why I hate the term loliable. So this came from the early 2000s when Lolitas were primarily on LiveJournal and English speaking Lolitas were trying to avoid the term Lolita because of its connections with the book. So the community was abbreviating it to Loli, but then they didn't consider the Japanese connotations that the term Loli would have. So since then, the community has stopped using the term Loli, but you'll still see it in the history of the Western community because there was communities that used it. An example of this I've mentioned before is Loli Valentine's, Loli Secrets, and of course the term Loli Abol, which is to make something Lolita or to identify something as Lolita passing. The other thing that I hate about this is just that it comes from a time when Lolitas constantly felt that they needed approval from other Lolitas on LiveJournal, things were less accessible, so there was constantly this conversation of like, is this okay? And I just sort of hate this notion that you have to get approval from someone else. I've always hated it. I've always like <laughs> spoken out against it with my content because there is no true guideline of what is or isn't Lolita. There are common aspects and elements that we can look at. It just feels like asking for someone's permission to label something as Lolita-able, as Loliable or not, like who gave them the right to decide that? Because this attitude in the live journal community of asking permission, asking if something is okay, asking if something is Lolita, it also created this like huge sense of entitlement among Lolitas, which led to people being excluded and judgmental and bullied and harassed, which is just, it's, it's stupid. If you want to keep using the term loliable, you can, but I will not use it. I refuse to use it. And if you type it or say it to me, I will cringe. Okay. <laughs> what I want for people wearing Lolita is to just have the confidence to try things out and decide for themselves whether they like it or not and be able to have that comfort to say, yeah, I didn't really like this because the colors didn't look good together. Or I do really like this even though it is a different structure than traditional Lolita, I like how it looks. And I understand that there is a gray area where maybe you're not sure 
or it doesn't look right to you, but you're not sure what about it is off. And I just think that rather than asking, is it Lolita? Is it Loliable? Instead, we should have conversations around, does this look nice? Do you think this looks nice? What would you change about it? Are the materials good quality? Do the structural elements of the pieces look good together? I think that we should be more expressive, not to make it more Lolita, but just to feel more comfortable in it and to feel more confident in it. There's probably people out there that are cringing at this 2000s, 90s stretchy shirt, but I like how it looks. I think it's cute. <laughs> I'm sure there are a lot of people that are upset by the very idea of Hot Topic carrying Lolita fashion. And there's other people who are rejoicing because we have to remember that everyone who comes to Lolita fashion has a different background. They have different uh, needs. They have different restrictions. And Hot Topic carrying Lolita fashion would actually be a very good thing, in my opinion. And I explained this a little bit in my Why Are Lolitas So Mean video, but commodifying a fashion, sure, it might change the exact look of it over time, but having a larger audience see this fashion and get used to it and be drawn to it, I think really helps Lolitas, whether they decide to shop from Hot Topic or not, because that exposure to a general audience will help them be more accepted by the general public. I basically wear Lolita fashion and new goth fashion, and the silhouettes of dresses that I wear are pretty much the typical cupcake Lolita silhouette, and then also this silhouette with a kind of goth dress that is shorter, and it's still sort of a tight bodice with then a flared out skirt, but it's a bit shorter. And I feel that Hot Topic is really good at making those sorts of silhouettes. I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of a skater dress, but it's often with sleeves. I think a major sign that something is Lolita fashion or not is whether you can fit a typical petticoat underneath it. So I'm also going to be looking at what kind of petticoats you can wear. The first dress we'll be looking at is the Sweet Society Kawaii Heart Lace Up Dress. My first impressions of this dress is that it can probably be styled in a Lolita fashion type of way. I feel like this skirt has enough room to fit a petticoat. I do think that I could have gone for a smaller size because there is room in the chest. I am forever in between a large and an extra large in Hot Topics sizing. This is an extra large and I definitely think I could have gone for a large in this particular release. I wish that it had shirring so that I could just tighten it up a little bit in the chest and waist area. I'm really grateful that there are two pockets and the sleeves, they do feel a little bit loose. I think it's just mostly the chest area that's loose for me, but they haven't been slipping and I filmed an entire other video, my Tamagotchi video, which is probably out already, and it didn't slip at all. It didn't feel uncomfortable in that way. I think the detailing in this definitely has Lolita elements like this ribbon down the side, the way that these scrunched sleeves are made. Even this heart, you don't see this exact type of heart in Lolita fashion that much, but you do see kind of like heart aprons, heart shape here. I kind of like that it's plain white because a lot of Lolita necklaces end right here and with a lot of other dresses, there's a lot of detailing in this section. So this could be a nice way to display a necklace. So yeah, let's measure this out and see if I can style it in more of a Lolita way. It's definitely cute as a casual dress. I have a little bit of a Lolita element to it by wearing a blouse already, but let's add a petticoat, switch up the blouses, add some accessories, and we shall see. It seems like most sweet Lolita dresses are about 80 to 100 centimeters long. I measured out a bunch of my own dresses and then I also looked through some random Lolaberry listings as well. The length of this dress seems about right and you can see a similar sleeve style on this Baby the Starshine Bright JSK and then the heart apron as I mentioned in this Tabo dress. This dress is 81 centimeters long and the skirt width is 91 centimeters. I feel like this could be a Lolita coordinate. I feel like you can wear this dress 
in a Lolita fashion way. I'm really surprised. The skirt size definitely fits a Lolita fashion petticoat. I feel like it gives the Lolita fashion silhouette. It covers all of the bases that make something Lolita fashion. I did struggle a little bit with getting the right blouse to pair with it because of the style of the sleeves and then also because of the thin material having textures not show up underneath it. But honestly, I have those same challenges with regular Lolita fashion pieces. I do think that this kind of lower waist, I'm not sure if this is because I have a slightly too large of a size for me or if this is more just where it lands. I know a lot of Lolitas are used to having high-waisted things, I especially am, but you do see this kind of drop lower waist in indie brands like Miss Danger and Lady Sloth, so I wouldn't say that this waist style is wrong or not Lolita. It does make it a little bit more challenging with where you place your petticoat. I put this one a little bit lower than it just because that's the shape that I liked seeing with it, but it's up to you to kind of play around with. I think that this dress might be better off with a bell shape. I feel like it might be stretched out a little weird with this cupcake, but for my own personal style, I really like it. And I would say that you could wear this dress in a Lolita fashion way. The next dress we will be looking at is the pink clown bear carousel bib sweetheart dress. When I saw this dress, I was really excited for it because it is circus and bears, but they only had large left and I did not think it was gonna fit me. I did not expect this dress to fit me and it does quite nicely and I'm really happy about that. This upper half is definitely giving a Lolita style with the bib and the sleeves. Usually when Japanese Lolita brands release a dress in this style, an OP, it does not fit me. I find that usually the sleeves are, they come up to here, they're quite short and they feel really tight. And I'm actually really happy that with this dress, the sleeves actually fit me. And I used to wear binders with Lolita and now I wear normal bras or sports bras with this. Right now I'm wearing a normal push-up bra style and you can kind of see the lines of it, which I don't totally love. And I find that when I'm moving around, it kind of makes this line here and it's kind of pulling up the sleeves a little bit. I think that I could definitely remedy this just by wearing a sports bra instead. The length of this dress is like right above my knees and I feel like the width could fit a petticoat, maybe a smaller one. It's not really shaped like a bell, it's just kind of shaped like it's fanning outwards, which is not really Lolita. I feel like I can kind of fake this with a smaller petticoat that's kind of shorter to get that shape. We'll have to see. My guess is that the silhouette is not going to be quite right. When I first looked at it, I thought that it was going to be way too short. And I don't think that on me, the length is going to be as much of a problem, just kind of getting that shape. I was not expecting this to happen. So I was going to make a whole different coordinate. But before that, I was like, let me just put on my cream and sugar petticoat because I know it's not going to work. I just want to see it. But somehow it does work. <laughs> What the heck? All I did was add some wrist cuffs and my cream and sugar petticoat and it actually does fit under this dress and it fully looks like Lolita and I feel like the length is fine and it looks really cute and I'm mind blown. <laughs> I still feel like I want to wear a different bra. I don't like how it is like pulling up. I think that I could also fix this with just wearing a belt because it would hold it in place better. But like, what the heck? This is so cute. Why does it work? I feel like it works. Is someone really at the door? Oh my gosh. Why? <laughs> I just received this absolutely beautiful Rose Forever bouquet in the mail, but it definitely deserves a Halloween spooky outfit 
So let's go. I am so grateful that Rose Forever wanted to sponsor another one of my videos. If you've been watching me for a while, you've probably seen me talk about them before. I have a bunch of cute ones decorated in my studio that I have in other videos. Rose Forever is a New York based brand that started in 2019 and they create luxurious rose boxes with naturally preserved roses that will last for a year as if freshly picked. All materials used in these boxes are vegan friendly, even the pink suede and black black velvet. The thing that I love about Rose Forever is that there's so much variety so even when I feel like being a spooky fall babe they have options for that and I can decorate even more spaces. I love this crystal box with black roses. It is so beautiful. It's perfect for fall and Halloween. As you can tell, I really want Halloween to come. I am in pre-Halloween season in my heart. I use this to store random things that are just scattered amongst my desk so that it's all contained but still looks cute. This could be a really cool option to keep your Halloween candy in and use as decoration for Halloween and for giving out candy. I'm obsessed with this black and orange bouquet. It is perfect to add into any other Halloween decor. You can get $25 off your order from Rose Forever using my code lovelylore25. Thank you so much Rose Forever for helping me decorate my home and supporting my channel. Moving away from sweet Lolita and now into some gothic Lolita. We are looking at this black and white striped to fur dress. The striped sleeves are attached. It Definitely is giving old school vibes. I would have loved to have this dress in high school. It's totally the sort of Lolita I was into in the 2000s, so I figured I'd get some retro shots on my lo-fi camera. I'm not as much a fan of this skirt style. It's shaped more A-line, which I've seen in more gothic and classic Lolita, but it's a shape that I don't personally wear too often. I could not fit my regular cream and sugar Lolita petticoat underneath this dress, so instead I wore my hoop skirt a lot lower to poof out the bottom of the dress. It sat right around my hips, but as I was moving around it kept riding up and then the pockets would kind of pop out and make the shape skirt a little bit weird. So I definitely think that I'd need to get a different petticoat for this in order to wear it in a Lolita way. And I personally think I'll probably just wear it as a cute goth dress. I think there is definitely a lot of possibilities for styling this. This dress is a little on the longer side. It's about 99 centimeters long or 39 inches and the skirt width is about 91 centimeters or 36 inches at its widest point. Now let's take a look at the Mad Tea Party Stripe Suspender Skirt. This is a Lolita skirt. I don't know what else this would be. I feel like it absolutely needs a petticoat or else it would look really boring. I don't really have anything to compare this to because I don't typically collect Lolita skirts. I prefer the style of JSKs and these straps are kind of annoying me so I'm gonna take them off. I don't think that it's necessary to wear these straps but I think it's really cute. The shape really reads as Lolita. The materials feel like what would be used for a Lolita skirt. There's pockets. The theme of this skirt is like a dark Alice in Wonderland and I went for a clowny look just because I felt like red and black are often colors I associate with clowny things, but I think this could be done in like a really cool queen of hearts sort of way as well. The reviews for this item were interesting because there were people talking about the shirring of the skirt and they didn't understand that. And then there was someone else who bought it and posted a photo, which I don't know that I have permission to share, so I won't, but they were clearly a Lolita and they had styled it in a Lolita way. And then the other reviews were clearly people who didn't understand Lolita, so. Yeah, this last dress is initially what got me started on thinking about Lolita fashion pieces from Hot Topic because I got this dress to be just a casual goth dress and then I noticed that it was a little bit longer, it had this tiered nature with lace on it and I thought, could this potentially be Lolita? Which I think that it can. I think that Gothic Lolita has 
a lot more wiggle room. I think that you can get away with more typically non Lolita aspects in gothic Lolita fashion. I think that this dress is a little bit on the short side, but I still like it. And I fit a hoop skirt underneath it, not a full size petticoat. And then the straps are a little bit thin typically, but you kind of see different straps in different types of Lolita, so I think it's okay. Um, I really like it paired with this blouse from 42 Lolita. I feel like that really pulls in the Lolita look of it because there's puffy sleeves. And then the ends of the sleeves have almost like a wrist cuff type of shape. It's almost like a faux wrist cuff. This might be my favorite outfit right now. I'm really feeling it. Can you buy Lolita fashion pieces from Hot Topic? Yeah, I think that you can. And I'm afraid to say this because I feel like the live journal community, that history, it created two types of Lolitas. It created the ones with all the entitlement who think that they know the fashion, they know all the rules and they are going to implement them and police people over it. And then it created the people who are terrified to label anything Lolita, who are afraid <laughs> <laughs> to say something is Lolita or not, and I am more in this spectrum. I think that it's important to identify styles and categorize things because then it's easier to find, it's easier to express yourself, but it's also not the end-all be-all. It's not super important. If something doesn't end up being perfectly Lolita, it's fine. It can still be in this kind of umbrella category. I think that you do need sort of a base knowledge of Lolita fashion in order to pick pieces from Hot Topic to wear with it. And it is sort of a gamble. If there's a way for you to go and try it on in person, I think that you will have a much better success rate than doing what I did. <laughs> but I was able to take on this risk because of my Instagram partnership with them. It's hard to really see the shape and style when they are not styled in that way online. And then I think that they use very tall models, especially looking at this circus bear dress. This lands much higher on the model's legs than it did on me. Check the measurements, check the measurements against yourself. And if you know people that have those pieces, it's always good to ask them and get their recommendations. Can you still buy these pieces that I've recommended in this video? I have no idea. Hot Topics stocking makes no sense to me. So story time. I met a Lolita at an event and they were wearing this really beautiful vest layered over a dress and I asked them where they got it and they said that it was from Hot Topic, but they got it years ago. Sort of implying that I wouldn't be able to get it now. And then I found the same vest on their website. And I was talking to a friend about it and I was like, why would they gatekeep this vest for me? Like, why would they want to gatekeep it? I don't get why they told me that. Like, clearly they're lying about getting it years ago. But then my friend corrected me and said, no, actually, I remember that piece from years ago. It's just that they still carry it. So I'm hopeful that these pieces will be available if they're not available now, that they will come back and we can all keep an eye on more dresses that have Lolita elements, Lolita silhouettes. There was one that I really wanted for this video, but for some reason it would not ship to Canada. And if anyone has worn this dress, I'd love to see it. I think that these pieces you could definitely wear to a meetup, obviously, Different meetups have different dress codes. I wouldn't wear this to like a brand specific event. Even if you have a large Lolita wardrobe, it could be something that you want a cheaper dress if you want to go like to an outdoor event or like ice skating or rollerblading or something like that. This could be a good option to still wear the fashion but have a dress that's more expendable. I think that this could be a good option if you have a smaller budget as well if you are plus size. Most of these pieces have plus size options. I hope that this video has also helped you maybe think of different ways to style pieces and make them appear more Lolita and maybe different elements to look for when you are thrifting or if you want to make stuff. And as always, stay lovely. First, oh my god, get out of my eye. Get out of my eye of whether something is Add to your leaf. Lolita. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. My brain is fried. I've been filming so much. Apparently now Hot Topic has Lolita pieces.